Welcome to Rogue System. This is episode two. This is Rogue System. And it is updated. There's more stuff in the game. They're going to be updating this game a lot. Man's mind and spirit grow with the space in which they are allowed to operate. Craft a Eric Rocket Pioneer. That's cool. I dig that. I dig that. Okay. So let's see if we can't let our imagination run wild. In tutorial 2, basic maneuvering. Alright, briefing. The purpose of this scenario is to teach you the basics of maneuvering using both rotation and translation thrusters. Likewise, you'll learn how to do high velocity burns using various MTS booster modes. It is strongly recommended that you visit the control option page and set up your preferred flight controls before starting the tutorial. I already did that. I set them all up. They're really good. Really sexy. Um, all right, and you know what? This is, I'm starting to get a hang. I'm starting to get a hang of this. I did tutorial one off, off camera, and um, it was really cool. You know, it really opened my eyes to some stuff. Okay, let's see. Welcome back to the Flying Fox. In this tutorial, you'll be shown the basics of maneuvering a ship in a zero g frictionless environment. It feels quite differently to flying within an atmosphere. Yeah, I know that. There's no atmosphere. You keep going. Alright. Let's hop in. Pilot seat. Let's save that seat. Go ahead and activate your viewport monitoring system. And they've got it all powered up for me, which is nice. I tried to play a couple of uh, sandbox modes. And I couldn't even power on the ship. It, like, it would break the ship when I tried to power it on. It's more complicated than it looks. You have to worry about, like, these temperatures. and I guess it makes sense because space is cold. Um, activate the VMS. I forgot how to do that. I think you go to displays and then this. Yeah. There you go. Oh, look at that beautiful planet. beautiful gas giant. If you recall from the first tutorial, it's managed through the MFD. I, re I recalled. I knew it. Using the translation controls as well as pitch roll and yaw. And trying out the MTS boost deflector. Before going any further, you may want to configure these. I did that. I did that. P press escape. I know how to change the controls. We're 800 kilometers above the surface of whatever we're orbiting. This gas giant, maybe? Okay. Hmm. Don't worry, if at any time during the tutorial you forget, you can go to controls. Your ship's attitude is essentially which way it's facing. You can change attitude directly by using the pitch, roll, and yaw flight controls. <clears throat> Alright, try pitching up now. And I set these to Kerbal commands. Kerbal space program style commands. Alright. We... We continue to rotate forever. Beautiful. <clears throat> I will continue to remain at rest. I mean, I will continue to remain spiraling. Alright, in the upper atmospheres of planets, there is little to no drag. I know. You must apply the counterforce by pitching down. Okay. There we go. That was cool. Try yawing to the right for three seconds until you build up some, some momentum. Okay, now pitch down for two more seconds. Finally roll right for four seconds. Right, okay. Whoa, we got all kinds of freaky diggy. Motion sickness can affect even the most seasoned pilots. 
If you start to feel a bit uncomfortable, try focusing on something that isn't moving or shutting your eyes for a moment. No, no, I'm used to this. I like it. I like to imagine the whole universe is spinning around me and I am perfectly still. If you were to continue to add attitude input, your rotation rates would simply increase. Eventually the force um, forces would become greater than you and your ship could safely tolerate. Fortunately, pilot reactions to acceleration forces are currently disabled. I'm glad. Counter all rotation. We have eight seconds. Okay. Did it. I think I did it. Yeah, I did pretty good. Okay. This is normal. Hey, it's Prograde. Hello, Prograde. I see you. You're going to do this again, but this time. Well, what did I do? Oh, crap. This time you have the assistance of the navigation autopilot or NAS. There's that scary black giant. Scary gas giant right there. I think it's scary. Alright, NAS. Try and y'all right. Okay. Y'all. Do some y'all. Put in some pitch. Alright, and now some roll. Yeah. Look at that. There's the NSA panel. Um, it's already enabled. No, it's not. I turned it off. Enable. Allow. You're going to use the attitude stabilizer to hold. Press hold. Hold. Roll hold. Oh crap, wrong button. I love the RCS noises. It's like, mm, it sounds like whales. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay, I'm gonna switch to an exterior view. You press F1 to switch to the exterior, or you press F2. Nice. The appropriate thrusters will fire. Let's try that again. Oh, I'm totally arrested. That was easy. Your ship should come to a complete stop. Yes, it did. Once again, and this time with holds active, pitch down. All right. No, oh, it stopped me. That's cool. Oh, that's nice. Okay, that makes it easier to navigate. Try maneuvering a bit to get a feel for the system. Okay. Wow, look at that. That must be the sun of wherever I am. Some strange and freaky alien world. That looks nice. It's a dawn on an alien planet. So we're in the Milky Way. It looks like we're in the Milky Way anyways. Alright. There's that beautiful sun. Just stare right into it. Okay, I will look at the nice gas giant. That's a that's a really good view. Okay, learn to predict when you release the controls, so that when the autopilot is finished, you'll be at the desired attitude. Okay, an AS can be damaged during combat. A malfunction due to component age, or a random fault. That would be fun not have NAS. Practice flying manually. There will come a time during your career that you'll be glad you did. RCS stands for Reaction Control System. The RCS is compromised of many small thrusters located all around the ship. Pitch roll and yaw rotations are achieved by firing the proper RCS thrusters around the ship's center of mass. 
However, you can also move your ship with the proper combination of thrusters. This is called translation. For example, if you apply thrust from the left side of the ship longitudinally balanced with the center of mass, the ship will translate to the right. It's possible to translate longitudinally fore and aft, that means like, you know, forwards and backwards, laterally, left and right, and vertically, up and down. Translation is like, you know, you go up, you go down, you go left, you go right, you go forward, you go backwards. Um, that's all translation means. Um, it's not really meant for like traveling really far to like another planet or anything. It's just meant for like very fine, fine tuning where you are. That's what the RCS is for. It's not like a main engine or anything. And then, you know, translation is kind of like the opposite of um, rotation. Which rotation is like pitch, roll, you know, what we were doing to get ourselves all spinny and stuff. <clears throat> and that's like, a that's attitude. They call it attitude control when you're all spinny and you're spinning around. And then translation is when you just kind of move a little bit up, move a little bit down. In space travel, without visual aids, these translations are impossible to see. That's that's very true. Conveniently, you happen to be very near an orbiting training platform, the OBT Campania. We'll use this to demonstrate translations. The Campania should be within five kilometers of you. Look around for it. The VMS trace brackets should help you find it. What is the VMS? Oh, okay, these. Okay. Without aiming directly at it, adjust your ship's attitude so that you're pointed generally at the campana. Continue when you're done with this. Okay, let me turn off this. I set that to a command. And let's look around and see if we can find that. I'm a little concerned I don't have orbital data. Okay, let's put it on navigation mode. Whoa. What the freak? Stop rotating. That's cool. It's much harder to yaw than it is to... Hmm. I guess this is showing us where we're going. We're kind of whoa. Slow down. Oh, this ship is interesting to control, I'll tell you that. Five kilometers is pretty far. Look at those graphics, man. That looks good. Okay. Uh, why is my inner tank level low? That's scary. Maybe if I press internal dock or external dock, invalid datums. Let's turn this off and on. Let's track. I guess that's it. Is it? No, it's prograde. Okay, tracking. Let's do our sensors. Oh crap, there it is. It's in our okay, it's behind us. I'm starting to get the hang of this. This is cool. Alright, and it seems to be a um is that above or below? I guess above us. 
Oh, there we go. There he is, R17. Alright. Kill rotation. You can do it. That's pretty good. Look at those pixels. Okay, continue. When you approach another ship peacefully, do not fly towards it. That way you won't hit it if you overshoot. What if I'm approaching another ship non-peacefully? Should I ram right into it? Your attitude stabilizer holds should still be active, so your ship should be stable once aimed. Hmm. Translate forward using whatever controls you have set up for this. Okay. I have orbiter controls, because I'm used to orbiter. So let's aim. Okay, that should be okay. What is that? Like my thrust? I don't want to go that fast. Oh, cool. Okay, I just figured that out by myself. That's never happened before. I locked on, and now it's showing me my relative velocity and my C. I don't know what C is. Why is my C negative 20? Let me fast forward time a bit. Hmm. I think I might have this actually screwed up. I think I actually have it backwards. Maybe my C needs to be positive? Oh, of course it does. Okay, good. I got positive C. Let me change the controls for that. I have it backwards. Ship system. Flight controls. Yeah, I mixed up fore and aft. This needs to be 9. This needs to be 6. Okay, good. Now we should slowly be coming over to that thing. Use short burst, checking between each to see if the range is decreasing. Located under the trace bracket is decreasing. Stop thrusting when it does. Oh, that's the range. I guess the R. Um, my program's over there. Maybe we can kind of like move it over like that. There we go. Okay, my range is decreasing. Let's speed up a bit, huh? Oh, that's... Wait, it's still slowing me down. Six should not be slowing me down. Flight controls... I guess I didn't change it. Oh, I didn't press save changes. <laughs> Nine. Nine! Save. Close. Resume. Okay, that's better. All right, so we can fast forward time to remember you have to undo whatever was done so you don't come too close, or too fast before translating aft. Begin translating aft before it looks like you will overshoot. Okay. Uh, I wish I had a couple more MFDs. Just one MFD. That's so so old school. I need like six of them. Man, this is a beautiful spaceship. Oh crap, my periapsis is like 130 kilometers less than it was when I started. How did that happen? I see you. We're closing in on this guy. I wonder what R, is that kilometers? Probably. Four kilometers away. We're just gonna watch it close in on us. We can fast forward time too. Three times, four times, five times. Five times is the maximum. Oh crap. Alright, stop it. Um let's move our prograde. I'm moving the prograde towards the object. The prograde is the big green circle. I'm moving it using my translation thrusters. Okay. Let's fast forward time a bit. I'll start slowing down when I get within like one kilometer. 
which is going to be in about a second. All right. Oh, crap. Stop it. Okay, slow down. Oh, okay, yeah, slow down. Slow down, mate. Slow down, buddy. And I like to keep my prograde lined up if I can. All right. There we go. Okay. Now let's just fast forward some time. Try to get within one kilometer. Oh, good. Hopefully you're somewhere within one kilometer. And fairly stationary with respect to Campana. Campana! I hear if hear the proximity pulse, you're within 0.5 kilometers. It speeds up as you get closer. The platform will start to drift left across your viewport. Hold on. Let me get to it first. I don't hear a proximity pulse. Let's center this in my point of view. Okay, let's put them right there in the center. I'm using translation. Okay. Continue using left and right thrust until the platform stays in the center of your viewpoint horizontally. Okay, let's slow down. Pretty close to the tank thing. Oh, man. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Use up and down thrust until it's centered vertically. I think it's pretty much centered. As you can see, the thrust forces created by the plasma make it difficult to stabilize completely. You can get more position by switching to cold gas or dock limiting mode. Do this now with the control switch on the MTS panel. Oh! Did I do it? Yeah, I did. Okay, that was an accident. Cold gas. Cold gas overrides all other MTS modes. When using this, gas is pumped directly out of the nozzles without being ionized or heated. That's good. This produces much lower thrust speed, which offers greater position. precision. Using cold gas, try to move within 0.3 kilometers of the platform. I already have, man. I already have. If you manage to become stationary with the platform, congratulations! Yay, it's so easy. If not, continue to practice. So try not to hit the platform, okay. I'm glad there's collision in this game. You will need to know how to use RCS for just about every maneuver you will make, including docking. Practice often. Before moving on, slightly advance the MTS booster throttles, and then set to 0%. How do I do that? Slightly advance the MTS booster throttles? Slightly advance the MTS boost throttles. What does that mean? Slightly advance it. What are they talking about? This thing? Oh, this is like Speedy Gonzales. That's extra powerful. Okay, cool gas. I hear like a drum track in the background. That must be the... That must be the old, um... That pulse he was talking about. Okay. What do they mean? Oh, this is the MTS, right? 
So how can we advance the boost? Throttles. I don't want to screw with this. This is scary. Throttle lock unlocked. that do no clue all right um press this button emr emergency boost well that's powerful hmm boost allow Clicking is getting slower as I'm going further away from the station. I still have not figured out how to slightly advance the MTS boost throttles and then set to 0%. You know what? This is probably like a command or something that I need to learn. Uh, cold gas. So let's go here. Let's look for that, alright? Ship system, just me and you, YouTube. Boost throttle. It's right here. Axis only. M oh, the MTS. Throttle up, throttle down. It's seven and four. Okay, got it. So let's try that. Let's try seven. That gave us 10% booster. Then set to 0%. At, okay, that was... Okay, I feel a little derpy. I feel like a derp. To start the last portion of this tutorial, use the MTS rotary knob to select boost allow. In this mode, MTS can divert a portion of the plasma Produced by your ship's dorsal and ventral boost nozzles. Rotate your ship so you are no longer pointed at the station and facing open space. Before using the boost throttle, take notice of the right mini HUD on the VMS, which provides current datums about your orbit. Talking about this? Yeah. Um, if you're unfamiliar, your Apple apps is the high point of your orbit. At Apoapse, your orbital velocity will be at its lowest. As you pass Apoapse, your orbital velocity increases as the body's gravity pulls your ship closer to it. When you reach the lowest point of your orbit, when you are closest to the body's surface, you are at periapsis. As you apply translational thrust, your orbital velocity changes, which alters your orbital profile. The apoapsis and periapsis will update accordingly. This is a nice tutorial, a nice explanation of all this stuff. Do not let your periapsis drop into the lower atmosphere or to the body's surface directly. Your ship is not designed for atmospheric flight. We are also shown the time it will take to reach both apoapsis and periapsis. So if this ship hits if this ship hits atmosphere, it's it's gone. Velocity is your current rate of speed relative to the body you're orbiting, expressed in meters per second. I guess I can zoom out. Um, period is the time it will take to complete the or one orbital, and eccentricity is the shape of your orbit. Zero eccentricity represents a perfectly circular orbit. Between zero and one, it forms ellipticals. One is a parabolic um, escape orbit, and more than that is a hyperbolic. Hyperbolic, I'm probably not saying that right. Finally, the zenith angle is the angle between the vector created by the orbiting body center to your position and your... I gotta read that. I don't know this one. Zenith angle is the angle between the vector... The vo it's like a velocity thing, right? 
the vector created by the orbiting body's center to your position and your current velocity vector. Oh, I guess that means like where we're currently getting flung around the planet. Mm. Is that related to inc inclination? I don't know. Oh yeah, I think zenith angle is like inclination, so I think I'm, it means I'm in a... Oh, zenith angle, okay. That means I'm heading like, I'm heading west, I think. <sighs> I'm heading west, I'm in an equatorial orbit. A velocity vector uh, expresses both the direction and rate at which an object is moving through at that moment. Generally, the zenith will be 90 degrees when in a stable orbit. That said, and if you are pointed, what does that say? Generally, the zenith will be around 90 degrees. Okay, that said, and if you are pointed at open space, go ahead and move the MTS throttles to 100%. Both are locked and should move together. All right, so uh, I'll probably come back to this in the next video, all right, because why not? Thanks for watching.